No flash photography. Okay, class holes. Today, <laughs> we are going to talk about abusing animals because last class we talked about abusing drugs. I'm assuming many of you have pets that came from a pet store or shelter. And even though you guys love them and you would never hurt them, they probably had an abusive past. According to an article that I found on WebMD by Katherine Cam, which I accessed on November 23rd, 45% of teachers have admitted to bullying their students. No, no, I mean 45% of animal owners have admitted to bullying their pets. That's wait, 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 wait. Are you saying that it's common for students to be bullied by their teachers? Most of us here are students, so I feel like this is something important for us to learn about. I've done a lot of research about abuse, and I feel like I can uh, contribute to this conversation a little more than I have been. Did I call on you to speak? Either of you? No, but we thought we could contribute. I don't care what you thought. Hey, it sounds like you're the one being an abusive teacher right now. We've talked about abuse all week, so I think we pretty much know what it is by now. Okay, all of these interruptions are ruining my lesson. Animals or people experiencing abuse from their authority figures undergo many negative effects that hinder their development and permanently affect their lives. Today, we're gonna to discuss the, me the mental and physical abuse and authority of authority figures and talk about ways to solve these forms of abuse. Well, You've mentioned mental abuse in regards to an owner and their pet, <laughs> but couldn't this happen between a, I don't know, student and their teacher? Okay, that's an irrelevant question, and I'm not even going to answer it. You saying that it's uh, irrelevant is wrong, and I'm going to tell you why. According to the Scholastic <laughs> Dictionary, written in 1994, last edited in 2002, and accessed on November 24th, 2015, Abuse has a couple different meanings to it. The noun is rude or unkind words. The verb is to treat a person or creature cruelly. And then abusive means wrong or harmful use of something, like a teacher abusing their powers to abuse a student. You know, of all of my students, of course, Ryan would be the one that can't even figure out a dictionary. That was wrong. The definition of abuse, it has too many definitions, so it can't be defined. Why would you even speak? <laughs> not wrong. Um, according to Dr. Michael S. in his web article, which was published on, called The Emotional Abuse of Our Children, which was published on March 2nd of 2012, teachers will emotionally abuse their students in many different ways. One of the ways that they do it is through isolation. They'll single out certain students as being losers, and they'll pick on them and make fun of them in front of everyone else. And they're, they'll just embarrass them in front of the class. Um, this can lead to degradation from their fellow students also, because uh, that when they see their teacher treating them this way, then they'll start to treat them that way also. And this kind of behavior can follow them outside the classroom as well. And this can really damage a person's self-image because when they perceive other people looking at them a certain way, they'll start to see themselves that way also. And it's really harmful to them. I agree with Dan. I've actually experienced abuse from a teacher before too, like in elementary school. She used to lose my homework, and it wasn't just me. It was me and a couple other students as well, including my sister. And, you know, she would um, single us out in front of class, emotionally abuse us, humiliate us, make us go through our desks and look for our homework, but we knew it wasn't there because we knew we turned it in. She would withhold recess from us, give us detention for any possible thing that she could think of. She'd accuse us of doing things that we never did, and she had no evidence to support any of her claims. And, you know what? It did hinder our learning experience, and I didn't want to go to school anymore because of her. Like, it made me sick to my stomach to have to go to school and be with her for hours at a time. And you know what? According to the British Journal of Educational Psychology, accessed November 23rd, students who have been abused by a teacher are more likely to abuse drugs or alcohol or even gamble. Why are you on your laptop in my classroom? I was just researching something. Get that hood off in my class. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, you can't do that. You know what? Now she's moving to physical abuse. Look what she just did to Dan. You know what? I actually have a video that is relevant to this conversation, too. Get off of the floor. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> As 
you can see from this video, this was taken in South Korea. And you know what? That four-year-old did not deserve that kind of treatment. And you know what? I don't think that we deserve the treatment that you're giving us either. What? What are you doing on your phone? Give, no, give me that. This, this is ridiculous. See me after class. No one has anything to say to me. I've had enough of this. I am not abusing you. I'm not the only, you know, I bet this thing's fake too. I am not the only teacher that does this. This is not abuse. According to an article that I found on the Delta Kappa Gamma Bulletin that was published in the winter of 2011, that I accessed on November 23rd, teachers justified this behavior as motivational, an appropriate part of the instruction, an appropriate disciplinary response, and good classroom management. Well, even if it's good classroom management, it doesn't justify the way you're treating us because it really affects us negatively. I interviewed Ariel Larson on November 23rd of this year, and she was abused by her eighth grade math teacher. Um, her teacher yelled at her during class once, and she ran away and hid in the girl's bathroom. And after class, her teacher followed her. She grabbed her by the arm and dragged her across the bathroom, and it left a big bruise on her arm. Afterwards, she didn't want to go back to class. She didn't want to see that teacher again. Um, she kept trying to fake six, so she didn't have to go back. Yeah, like and whenever she was there, she was quieter and didn't want to participate as much in the class. Yeah, like Casey said, this kind of abuse can happen anywhere in the world. An article by Kara O'Neill written on November 3rd, 2015, and read on November 24th, 2015, physical abuse by teachers happens all around the world. An example is a teacher in Venezuela injecting one of her students with some sort of drug because the student was being uncooperative in class and disrupting the teachers and the students. You know what? So what if I'm abusive? Who are you going to go to? There's no one that you can go to because even if you tell them about all this, they're just going to believe me. They're not going to believe you. <laughs> Well, I actually have a solution for this. All of us as students need to stand up for ourselves. According to Ruttner, the author of Stop Bullying, Stand Up For Yourself, found on November 22nd, 2015, teens need to help those being bullied by not joining in themselves and by being good listeners. So if you look at all of us here, I know I may be the video game nerd and Casey's the hippie and Ryan's Ryan and Dan is whatever Dan is, but we're all students here, and that's what's important. So don't just sit there and not help your fellow students. That just makes it worse. So I want all of you to stand up, please. Stand up, everyone. Right. <laughs> Are you kidding me? All of you, sit down right now, or I swear to God, I'm going to fail all of you. You're going to have to take this class again with me next semester. No. All of you. We can't stand Don't down. do it. Don't listen to her. We can't stand down. If we don't take action, then this kind of abuse is going to keep happening. We have to stand up and stick together to stand against this and stop it from happening to us again. I don't want to get hit anymore. That <laughs> hurt a lot, okay? We need to work together as a group to fight abuse. According to an article found on November 22, 2015, Pahoinen, a psychologist, states, individual cognitions and values may multiply when an intervention is designed to change the cognitions and values of a whole group. This basically means I made all of you stand upright, so we're standing in a group together. We're increasing our values to fight against this abuse that we're currently dealing with, and we're not going to let it happen anymore. It's not okay, so we're going to stand against you. There's a lot of us and only one of you. This is ridiculous. I am not abusive. Well, how about I remind you of everything that we talked about today. You abused us mentally by insulting and degrading us. Then you uh, got into our faces and harmed us physically. If, if it weren't for my classmates that stood up, this would probably still be going on right now. It's not right for you to treat your students this way. And we're not going to let it happen again. <laughs> you need to sit. Go. Go back. Sit down. What are you going to do? You're going to hit me? Yeah. We're standing up against you. Go. 
I'm going to make these empty because I will. <laughs> go sit down! No, I won't sit. Go! Go sit down! It's not going to work. I give up. <laughs>